we're going to take a look at an observer or estimator of the state vector. We'll start off with an introduction of the concept of an observer or estimator, then take a look at why the transient response matters. We'll go over the process for designing an observer and then examine a different state space representation called the observer canonical form. Work through one example of the observer canonical form that is representing a system in that form and then conclude the video with an example of designing an observer. The reason we want an observer is that in some instances, some scenarios, some systems, it's not feasible to measure all the state variables. And so we want to be able to estimate the missing state variables. Here's a concept of how this might work. We have the plant to which we're supplying an input that comes from our controller. The plant has an output. And then we have a separate observer, which is a model of the plant. And we give that model the same input as the plant, and then we're estimating an output, and we're estimating the state values based on the model. And then our controller um, comes up with its output based on these estimated state values. And then that is given to the plant. There is one big problem with this implementation. So let's look at the state space representation for the plant and the observer. Here we have the state equation and the output equation. These are the standard, this is the standard notation we've been using. And the observer is a model, is modeled exactly after the plant. So we have x hat dot. So x hat is our estimate of the state vector and then the same input matrix and output matrix. In order to see the disadvantage here, let's look at the difference between the true value and the estimated value of the state and the true and estimated values of the output. The input matrix times the input cancels out and so we're left with the state matrix times the difference between the vectors. Now as the plant responds to changes in input, then the estimate from the observer changes with um, those inputs also. The problem is though that they change at the same rate and so the estimate from the observer, the estimate from the observer that's given to the, or that's used for the controller, by the controller, is comes at too slow of a rate to be useful. And it's possible to see that these have the same rate because they have the same characteristic equation. So they have the same transient behavior because both the plant and the observer have the same state matrix. So what we want is a way to speed up the observer transient response so that the estimates for the state come almost instantaneously to the plant. In order to affect this change, we're going to use the output from the plant as an input to our observer. And we'll feed that back to the observer so that we can have a faster response. So conceptually, this is what it would look like. We have the observer has the input, same input as the plant, just like in the previous configuration. But now we have the output to the, to the plant also as an input to the observer. And we come up with the state estimates that are used by the controller. Now in detail, what that looks like is shown in this picture. Here we have our observer, which is this, this, this a model of the plant. So we have the input matrix, the state matrix, and we've got our estimate of the state vector. We have an estimated output coming from our observer model, and then the the plant output it goes to a summing junction. So we're feeding back the difference between the actual output and our estimated output. And that is multiplied by the scan matrix L and fed back into our state. So here is the equation 
for this observer with feedback, the state equation. We have A times our estimate for the state, plus B times U, plus L times the difference between our uh, estimated output and the true output. And then the output equation is unchanged. We're going to look at the error between the true state and our estimated state, so we want to see the dynamics of that because we want that error vector to go to zero more rapidly than the plant itself changes. So here's the state re space representation for the plant and we're going to find the error which is the difference between the two. So the state equation for the error is as follows. A times the difference, or A times the error minus L times the error or the difference in the outputs. And now we use our output equation. This difference between the outputs is C times the error vector. So we have A minus LC times that, and then introducing this notation for the error vector. Here's our state equation, and then our output equation. So we want to be able to change the transient response of the error vector. So like whenever we we're designing a controller, now we're designing an observer using the gain vector L. And again, we're going to place the roots of the observer's characteristic equation in order to get a faster response than the closed loop system has. So here's the characteristic equation for the observer. SI minus the difference between A and the product of LC. Just like whenever we used the phase variable form for controller design, there is a form that makes the mathematics easiest for observer design, and that is called the observer canonical form. This is a left companion state matrix, and now we're going to look at an, an example of putting a system into observer canonical form. Here's the transfer function for a given system, and we want to put it into observer canonical form. The first step is to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of s that shows up. So we end up with 1 over s plus 7 over s squared plus 2 over s cubed in the numerator and the denominator you can see here. The next step is to cross multiply. So we have c times the denominator is equal to r times the numerator. And now we want to group like terms, um, terms that have the same power of s. So for example we have um, 1 times r over s and 9 times c over s, so we're going to group those and factor out the 1 over s. And we have 7r over s squared and 26c over s squared. And we're going to group these terms and then we're going to solve for the c of s term. So we end up with three groupings, one for each of these powers of s. And the final one, this 1 over s cubed, we have 2r minus 24c. Now the state variables are going to be the outputs of these integrators. So here's um, one integrator. The output of this is going to be x3. The output of this integrator is going to be x2. And the output of this integrator is going to be x1. And we see that x1 is equal to c. So this is going to be our output observer canonical forms, x1, which is c. If we take the inverse Laplace transform, we can write the following differential equations. So we'll start from the bottom. x3 dot is equal to 2r minus 24c, and we said that c is equal to x1, so x3 dot is 2r minus 24x1. So that's this equation. x2 dot is the output of this integrator. I'm sorry, x right x2 is the output of this integrator so x2 dot is 7r minus 26 times x1 plus the output of this integrator which is x3 so that's the second equation and finally x1 dot which is c dot is equal to 9 times uh, is equal to r minus 9 times x1 plus the output of this integrator which is x2 And so now we can write the state space representation based on these state equations. We have this left companion matrix for the state matrix, and here is our input matrix. 
1, 7, and 2. And as said before, the output is just equal to x1. So there's our output matrix. So that's using the observer canonical form. Now we'll look at how to place the roots of the characteristic equation for the observer. Again, here's the characteristic equation, and we're going to look at the matrix or the vector L. So L is a common vec uh, column vector of length n, where we have an nth order system. So here's the difference A minus LC. A comes from the observer canonical form that we just saw, as does C. And L is this vector of gains. So A minus LC looks like this. And this is similar to what we had for the controller design. So when we take the determinant of this matrix, we're going to have these terms on the first column as coefficients. The video will conclude with this example. We want to design an observer for this system that is 10 times faster than the closed loop system that we have. So we designed a state space controller to have dominant second order poles at negative 1 plus or minus j2. So we want to design an observer with transient response 10 times faster than this, than the closed loop plant with the controller we used. So our first step is to put this plant into observer, or represent this plant in observer canonical form. And that looks like this. We've got our left companion matrix and our input vector. Now we find the state equation for the observer error. So we want to find A minus LC. And the we need the characteristic equation for this system. So A minus LC looks like this. We have gains L1, L2, and L3. And when we take the characteristic equation for this system, we have s cubed plus the sum of 8 and L1 times s squared plus the sum of 17 and L2 times s plus 10 plus L3. Now we just need to get the desired characteristic equation and set the coefficients equal in order to solve for the L values in the L vector. Now to get our transient response 10 times faster than the closed loop system, we're going to have poles at negative 10 plus or minus j20, and then we'll put our third pole at 10 times the distance from the imaginary axis as this pole. So we have this for our characteristic equation. Now when we equate the terms here, we get that L1 is equal to 112, 17 plus L2 is 2500, so here's L2 and 10 plus L3 is 50,000, so here is L3. Now we saw that if there's a system where it's not feasible to measure all the state variables, we can design an observer, and then the controller can work based off of estimated values for our state variables. We saw that in order to have adequately fast transient response from our observer, we'll use feedback of the plant output um, as input to our observer. And we'll use the gain vector L in order to place the roots of the observer's characteristic equations in order to get the transient response that we want.